Good morning. It is day 17, friends. Hard to believe. But it is day five of our week one as we continue journeying through part two of the consecration. And this 33 days, we are, wow, we're, we're past the halfway mark, guys. <laughs> so congrats. All right. Day five of week one of part two. Our theme for today is I am weak. Hey, good morning, Christy. I'm glad to catch you live. Thank you. So glad you're here with me. All right. We are going to enter into our readings for today in our book, Preparation for Total Consecration to Jesus Through Mary, According to St. Louis, by Father Hugh. Day five is going to be found on page 62. As always, drop your comments, questions, prayer intentions anytime there. And later on, go ahead and leave a comment with your intentions or thoughts so that we can continue to pray together. We, For the live crew, we always have our stories on Instagram and Facebook uh, posted at 6 a.m. where you can also reply and post your prayer intentions. So let's go ahead and begin with our morning offering. In the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world and salvation for the salvation of souls, the reparation of sins, the reunion of all Christians, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. All right, we're going to continue filling ourselves with the spirit of Jesus Christ, and we're going to focus on knowledge of self. So we've been growing and performing all actions in the spirit of humility, and that's continuing with each of these themes today, talking about weakness. All right, we start our readings. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to go to page 12 to invoke the Holy Spirit. Let's say this together. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Lord, send forth your spirit and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who instructs the hearts of your faithful with the light of your Holy Spirit, make us responsive to his inspirations so that we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now back to page 62 for day five. All right, our reading today is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter seven. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind in making me captive to the law of sin, which dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I of myself serve the law of God with my mind, with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. Yes, this sums up weakness right here, <laughs> right? When I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. Isn't that always the case, right? It's like when we have that resolve, like, gosh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to, you know, Whatever that thing is that you're trying to resolve, that evil is right there. 
trying to ensnare us back into the flesh. It says, I delight in the law of God in my heart. So in my heart, yes, this is where I'm like, yes, Lord, right? Don't we resolve in our hearts? We're going to we're going to be more virtuous, we're going to be more patient, we're going to be more loving, we're going to be more kind. And then there's war in our members. So in our minds, in our other parts of our bodies, wretchedness. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Jesus. Thank God. (laughs) Then I serve the law of God with my mind, and my flesh will serve the law of sin. Right? So I love that it just brings us back to what is going to help us. You know, if you think about like Eastern religions or just philosophies like Buddhism, you know, Buddha is there to, you know, you're trying to reach this transcendental state, right? You're trying to transcend and Buddha doesn't offer help. It's just like, you know, this higher level of being, you have to, you have to learn how to go. And with Christianity, Christ actually, he's our model and our helper. He gives us the grace. He helps us in our weakness. We don't have to white knuckle it, try harder all the time. We have to submit and surrender and let go. And in our weakness, he makes up for that. We're going to talk about that a little bit more after we do this St. Louis reflection here. So let's go back. It is very difficult, considering our weakness and frailty, to keep the graces and treasures we have received from God. We carry this treasure, which is worth more than heaven and earth, in fragile vessels that is in a corruptible body and in a weak and wavering soul, which requires very little to depress and disturb it. It's so true. (laughs) Made me think of, you know, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, right? Another letter of Paul, another quote from St. Paul. Incorruptible bodies in weak and wavering souls. So our body is dying, right? Our flesh is fading. For those of us in Lent, we we were reminded of that at Ash Wednesday, right? For we are dust and to dust we will return. And our weak and wavering souls. And it's so easy for us to become depressed and disturbed. We have to keep the graces and treasures we have received from God before us. I really believe that this is, you know, in the renewal of our mind. Yesterday, I think I might have mentioned that I was going out to uh, meet a friend for coffee. I was talking about, you know, it had a challenging day the day before when we had the re-record and my last um, appointment with my therapist and I knew that was going to be challenging. And then the Lord had just arranged for this time. And so, uh, you know, right after my consecration, go to head out and um, have a wonderful time. I mean, it was just the Holy Spirit was just all over this time with um, this friend that I hadn't seen in quite some time. And it's we became friends through infertility and, and uh you know, our common suffering there. And anyways, after the coffee, you know, we said goodbye. She was heading to her car and I head to my car. And um, I saw that a tire pressure thing had come up on the, on, um, you know, as a, as a warning on my car. And I wanted to check, oh, before I go, something told me just, you know, check your tires and just see. So I go and I'm looking around and sure enough, my back right tire completely flat. Oh, shoot. We just got our car back after it was gone for a month for work that had to be done. And those are new tires. And you guys know tires aren't cheap. So um, 
I was like, man, we just got those in December. What the heck? So we just had had a problem with our rental car when our other car, when our car was in the shop, also having a flat. And uh, so I called my husband, like, what, you know, can you give me the info to, you know, our dealership and everything? And they have a roadside assistance that we, you know, comes as part of it. So contact them, you know, dispatch a guy, the whole thing. And, uh, you know, so, well, it's, uh, it's about one something. So I'm hungry there. I'm, I'm parked right in front of a place for lunch. Let me go in there as I, you know, figure this out, wait for the guy, you know, my husband says, try to take it over to pet boys or something. They could air it up. And I'm thinking this is because we couldn't see that there was a nail in the tire. So, and I'm driving about a mile and a half on this tire still and uh get to the firestone you know man we can't do anything with this you're the wall is blown you can't repair this you're gonna have to I, you know i would take it back to your dealership so call over there they said okay we'll dispatch you know so it was thing after thing after thing you guys get this right you know you have your plan for the day what you're going to be doing all of a sudden derailed um and whatnot but <laughs> i was reminded of, of how much worse like that could have been i I could have gotten on the highway um, and that's under construction here. So there's no shoulder. Um, it's a very congested highway. And everybody dislikes, you know, driving on I-35 through, through Austin. So I could have been without a shoulder in a dangerous situation. I could have ruined the rim of the tire. Here I was, you know, parked in front. I'd already gotten food. So I was able to eat the food. And then I was right in front, uh, you know, found a spot, moved over in a, in a little ice cream shop here in, in the Austin area, went in, you know, the Lord had told me to take my, uh, my book with me and my, uh, my iPad. So I had it to do my preparation for today. Uh, you know, my guy was, took a while to come and, and change my flat, but he showed up and he was super nice guy, you know, started a new business. You know, I've been an entrepreneur, so He's talking about, oh, yeah, this and that. And he just was with a Marine, a former Marine. And he said, I'm sorry it took me so long, but he was in a totally different area in a different town nearby and was telling me about his experience with this Marine who just was so weak, right? Like, here we are just thinking of the Marines and how strong they are and how amazing, you know, how capable they are and how they've served our country. And now he's an elderly man and he has dementia. And Brian, my uh, my uh, car guy, you know, <laughs> that's changing my flat is telling me about, he said, I never had been around somebody with dementia before, uh, experienced that. And he said, you know, the man's trying to tell me story and uh, his mind is losing the stories as he's going, right? So, I mean, I've experienced this being around um, elderly people when I was caring for my dad. And it's so frustrating for them because they, they you know, it's it's like, they know something's wrong, but this man, I think, needed his battery uh, change on his car, and he he's talking and trying to tell these stories to Brian while he's trying to, you know, change, uh, wants to change his battery, and the guy has a half a gallon of gas left in his car, and so he says, um, you know, I don't mean to interrupt you, sir, but it's a really kind guy, he said, but um, your, your car is going to run out of gas do you have some more gas? And he goes, Oh, well, there's, you know, just three minutes up the road, you know, there's a, there's a, a place that I can get gas. And he says, okay, well, why don't, why don't you like, again, Brian doesn't understand this, you know, about dementia. He's like, why don't you go do that? And I, I'll change your, you know, your battery. And then that you'll be taken care of. And the guy just starts getting a little bit confused and, and um, he could just tell, that, that he was nervous about doing this. Just, you know, the man says, oh, it's just three minutes down. And it was sound, sounded confident, big, big ex-Marine, you know, and stuff. And he said, um, would you like me to go do that? Would you like me to take the truck and go get the gas for you? And he looked at, at him, you know, he said, um, would you, would you do that? And it was like, you know, just in that weakness, right? Just in that surrender, just asking for that help or, you know, somebody recognizing that in somebody else. What 
what a gift to them to just, you know, it's so we're struggling so hard um, to act strong and capable and confident. We can do these things. And all that, you know, and just in that weakness and just in that humility of just saying when we can't, I had to say, you know, to my teammate Tammy yesterday, Hey, I can't make this meeting with you. I can't record the, the video we were going to do. Um, we're going to have to reschedule. And, you know, the beauty of her to just be like, yep, yeah, I understand. It's okay. We can do that another time. And, and in that, you know, position to just say, all right, I'm just going to go with it. So he got my, you know, he got my spare on and here I am, you know, I can only drive 45 miles an hour now, you know, 15 or so miles to the other side of town. Cause I had gone all the way up into another town to meet this friend, you know, to get the, get my tire replaced. So they you know, down and I'm just realizing again, you know, every time I talked to him, well, it could have been worse. Yeah. Could have been worse. They were able to get me in, even though it was a little after four o'clock, take care of that, got home safe. And my husband who just felt, you know, who's kind of uh, walled up here with some, uh, some issues that he's been having with his foot, you know, just was feeling like he, you know, Oh, I, you could bring the car back. I'll take it. And I just thought, you know, it, with what he's going through, I I can do this. I can do this. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just embracing that weakness, which is really difficult, right? So there was a, a couple talks that gave last year and, and one with Tammy. And then there was another that we gave it, that I gave it at a woman's retreat last October talking about weakness, woundedness, and brokenness, right? And that one of the points that Tammy had in in our talk um, when we were uh, with actually with you, Christy, at the you know Catholic Family Life Associations uh, conference um, was that you know brokenness, woundedness, and weakness are not impediments for God to be to be used by God for our usefulness as his instrument, because God can use us not just despite these things, but because of these things. There's something in me that I've experienced a suffering, a brokenness, a weakness that I can connect with somebody else. And in doing that, that, you know, we, we come to understand more, okay, like our reliance upon Christ, despite our weakness, God calls us to love. And that commandment is, you know, to love one another as I have loved you. So that perfect model is Jesus, right? That laying down of our lives, that self-sacrifice. And the two models I put here are St. Therese and Sister Josepha that, you know, St. Therese, our patroness, right? It's saying, don't get overwhelmed by trying to do great things. That her little way, and I see you here, Christine, my household sister from Franciscan, we're both little flowers, of doing little things out of love for God and humility, okay? We have a podcast on um, all last season that we just did um, towards, you know, for the Jubilee year of St. Therese last year was the Little Way edition. So if you want to learn more about You know, the little way we break it down into five themes and we have saints that go with each of those themes. The other example I want to bring forward here is that uh, I mentioned before Sister Josepha Menendez and I had decided, you know, you could watch the video um, in the series that we did on Saints of the Sacred Heart. She was a Spanish nun, you know, from the 20th century, a visionary that Jesus revealed more of his sacred heart too. And she wrote the way of divine love. And what I (laughs) really took to heart as I was doing that was I was coming over a lot of my own weaknesses and struggles. Um, If you guys followed me last year when I was having to give these talks and, um, you know, Christina knows this as well. We talked about this was overcoming my fear of Um, a phobia, not just a fear, a phobia of public speaking that had plagued me throughout my life. And this was tied to childhood trauma. And so giving those talks was like a huge thing, you know, of of, of agreeing to go and and do that. And 
And it was having to learn to lean into that weakness, right? And every time it would feel that instead of just being like, oh, like focusing on my fear, focusing on the weakness, focusing on all of that, I had to realize it's not about me. And when God's calling me to do something for him, whether it's, you know, being here with you and, and doing this, if whether he's calling me to go do that, whether he's calling me to sit at my desk and write, whatever the thing is, whatever God's calling you to do that you may feel ill-equipped for, that you may feel like you're struggling to surrender for, the more that you focus on that and how hard that is, the harder it becomes, right? Because your focus is just going on that and thinking that. So I had to like learn to shift that. And Joseph was helping me to do that because Jesus said, <laughs> God said, he kept his instrument lowly in her own eyes as in those of everybody else. He said, it is not for what you are that I have chosen you, but for what you are not. So I have found room for my love, for my, excuse me, for my power and my love. And he would reiterate this to her time and time again. I didn't choose you for what you are. I chose you for what you are not. And that has given me room for my power and my love to dwell within you. So what he was asking her to do was just to be a dwelling place, place for him. And, you know, her sisters really had no idea in the convent what she was going through most of the time. But he wanted to, you know, find life for his words, to take courage from the understanding of how our efforts would draw fruit. He, he said it was the key was little acts of generosity. OK, so this ties so much to St. Therese. Little acts of generosity, of patience, of poverty, they become treasure that will win a great number of souls to my heart. That's how we do it. So as we're talking about this today, I didn't want us to totally just get hosed up and like, oh my gosh, we're so weak. We're so thing, and like sucked up into the poverty of it and not understand that, that there's a purpose in that poverty. That's it. We become, like create that room for God's power and his love to come. And in those little acts of generosity, he said, Christ told her that it's about our intention. If our intention is set to be loving, that's what makes all the difference for us to love generously. And he says, when we are ungenerous, we deprive ourselves and others of treasures. That's, listen to that again. For when we are ungenerous, we deprive ourselves and others of treasures. So, you know, asking where this comes from. Yeah, so this comes from the way of divine love. I have an old like kind of copy of this, uh, but you see it's this book. So there's a couple different versions. One, there's a shorter version, which is just more of the message. If you get the way of divine love by um, Sister Josepha Menendez, that this will actually cover like her biography and also her uh, I will tell you that it's about 400 some pages. It took me a while, but there's also an audio book. A few look up um, Catholic audio books, I think it was. I can try to find the link for that too for you guys later. Um, but it's it's a really beautiful, beautiful book. And um, so loving generously is the call. And to humble ourselves and try to and try to repair faults by little acts of love, right? So that we have this generosity and confidence and we surrender ourselves to his heart. So if we just take all these things and we just go right to the heart of Jesus, and we just say, just make up for what we're lacking. We go to the immaculate heart of Mary, help us, bring us to Jesus through these acts. And that God gives, this gives more glory to God. It does more good, he said, for souls than if we've never fallen. So that's encouraging for us, right? Yesterday when I had my moments where it was just kind of like, oh, wow, well, this is kind of taking me off. I had all these plans of what I was going to do this afternoon. I just had to remember, be generous in that love. Be generous in who he had me around, listening to them, smiling, showing up, getting other things done, just trying to be generous. And the intention is what's key there, right? So let's see what you guys say. So true. Yes, Christina. 
uh, by sharing that or whatever it is that we're loving others by sharing something that is vulnerable to you and they recognize that they're not alone. Christ is loving them through you. Amen. Amen. But look, doing this now. <laughs> yes, example of the Holy Spirit. It heals and it's moving through you. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. It's thanks be to God. So I really, you know, this is a great read, The Way of Divine Love. I go and listen to it. Um, you know, it's broken up into parts on that audio book. Uh, very, very inspiring. Okay, so that's just that's a, just a gem that I took away. All right, the question here back on day five is consider your personal history. How many occasions of grace and moments of blessing have you lost over the course of your life? How many times have sin or inconstanc inconstancy robbed you of blessing? So go back in your personal reflection time today to think about that. And, and it's bringing those blessings forward. You have to do that with your mind. And that's a lot of the discussion I was having with my friend yesterday was coming back to that point. You're saying, God, you know, no, we're going to take, you know, we're going to ask Christ to take captive of those thoughts. We're going to bring ourselves back and remember the blessings. But also to think of how has sin or inconstancy robbed us of the blessing? And that's going to help us to maybe see those weak, those blind points or whatnot, and maybe have that that uh, deeper resolve. Okay, let's go. Um, we're going to do our, our time of uh, intercession. So anything else that you guys have, uh, we are going to, you can list them now. And we will um, say our Jesus living and Mary prayer found on page 13. Then we'll move into our intentions, our St. Joseph prayer in our closing. All right. Oh, Jesus living and Mary, come and live in your servant, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your gifts, and the perfection of your ways, and the truth of your virtues, in the communion of your mysteries. Subdue within me the power of flesh and demon, by your Holy Spirit, for the glory of God the Father. Amen. All right. So I'm going to look for our intentions here. Uh, we're going to pray for Christine. Prayers for her daughter, her daughter's travel, her daughter's traveling. And we're going to pray for Christina, for your son Andrew, for his state swim meet, and he performed well, as well as his team. Yes, Lord, we just ask for all the graces uh, for Andrew and his team, and just for the discipline that he's had in his training, that those uh, all that discipline will just bear great fruit. We just pray uh, for that blessing. We pray for our priests, for deacons, for religious and consecrated. We pray for Mary to grow community we're seeking to build here. Uh, we pray for Christy that she can remain focused on what God's calling her to, for Anna, for decisions she needs to make and the conversations connected. We pray for Jan's health the stability of Our Lady of Grace Catholic School, for Melissa's husband to find a job soon, for Susan's daughter, Lauren, for Suzanne's family, for Toby's mental health and care, for Josue's continued healing, for Pepe, Delia, Josie, their health and their needs and their intentions, for the reversion of Luke, Shelley's son, to the Catholic faith, for the health and healing of Jessica Hannah. Today is her birthday. She begins chemo again, Lord, so help her. For the poor souls in purgatory, for widows, orphans, and the abandoned, for those suffering from addiction, for those suffering from mental illnesses, especially those who feel hopeless and suicidal, for the terminally ill and their caretakers, for all those that are suffering illnesses, help them in their in their needs. For those suffering with infertility, for an end to abortion and IVF and a renewal of respect for life the wisdom concerning all pro-life issues and leaders, for those grieving deep losses, renewal in the church. I want to continued prayers for Gabe, for a job, for movement forward with school, and for Christ to awaken a deeper love for the church in him. Yes, Lord. For Paul's family, relationships with family while dealing with his elderly parents. Ever insight and wisdom. 
Yes, Lord, we just ask for the grace of those things, for the graces in our relationships, for the struggles, for wisdom concerning our, his parents and, and their needs and how to care for them. We just ask for just continued healing in all ways possible. We ask our lady to bring that through her graces of the Immaculate Heart. We continue to pray for your anxiety uh, intensive program. All right, we pray for our families, our team, our online community at Little With Great Love, all of those that have continued to ask for prayers. We pray for all the Marian pilgrims that are doing the consecration, especially those on this journey, which would also be Casey, Caroline, Anne, Mary, Danielle, Tammy. I want to pray for Tammy's family, her ministry, the retreat she's planning with the women that she's also planning it with and for, for Natalie, for Caitlin in her formation, for Amanda. We continue to pray for Christine's needs, her son MJ, for his discernment for college, deepening relationship with our Lord, for her dad William, for Sarah's healing. Continue praying for Alma Sue and all of those in the Texas Panhandle with the wildfires. Pray for all they need. We pray for Teresa, Rosemary, Victoria, and Elizabeth. I think that's all of our prayer intentions. So we are going to invoke St. Joseph protection. And um, don't forget to say your memorare tonight. Um, and then we'll sing out our song after this. So, O St. Joseph, whose protection is so great, so prompt, so strong before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O St. Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O St. Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. St. Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Amen. All right, we are going to give all the rest of our intentions in our heart, give the rest of our day, give our, our weekend for those of us that are going into the weekend to the Immaculate Heart to bring to Jesus. And we'll sing our Salve Regina. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, ex ubis fili hebe, a te suspiramus, gemetes et fuentes, in a clacrimaru vale. Eha ergo, avocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, a nos convete. Et jesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, rubis, Possessilium ostende, O oh, Clemens, O oh, Pia, O oh, 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 Lucis, Virgo Maria. Told us to us, Mom, we are totally yours. Help us, Mary. For my live crew, I will be back here tomorrow at 2 p.m. if you are able. Otherwise, leave your intentions, catch the replay, do the prayers on your own, do a combo, whatever works. Keep going. Ever onward. 
God bless you guys.